Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this Unity video, we're going to be talking about jumping. So I've gone ahead and made some changes to the player controller script, which we're going to talk about here, uh, which kind of redefines the way that the character jumps and controls its max jump height. You can see the gravity scale over here. It's default set to 1, and in Unity, default gravity is same as real world, so negative 9.8. And I think it's measured in units, not meters per second. Um, but yeah, gravity is a thing, especially when it comes to jumping. So I'll just go ahead and hit play, and you can see how it's working right now, and then I'll go ahead and briefly explain how each of the parts of the jumping script are working. And I'll also put the script itself in the comments down below, or the description, rather. Okay, so while hitting play, our character moves left and right, just the same as normal. Uh, you'll notice uh, that because of the way I changed the movement, that if we hold left, uh, basically let go of left click, uh, the character will keep moving and sliding because we're applying forces now. Um, and the thing that's keeping it from sliding all the way, I believe, is the angular drag over here. So you can modify that if you want the character to slow down faster. But uh, here the main thing is jumping. So we hit spacebar, and um, basically it has a max jump height effectively. You can see in the script we got these variables called jump power, currently set to 1500. Uh, basically units of force, and max jump time. So how it's working right now is that while you have the space held down, it'll continue jumping uh, basically as high as you uh, allow it to jump. So if you just tap a little bit, it'll only jump a little bit. But if you hold down, it will basically keep increasing its jump up to the max jump time of uh, 0.15 seconds. That's kind of a uh, standard Mario Brothers style thing. If you hold down the jump button, usually a character can jump higher up to its max jump height. And uh, while we are not on the platform, the character is unable to jump. So uh, basically, in the script, it's only allowed to jump, basically, uh, the spacebar is only allowed to do anything, if it's in contact with one of these platforms, which uh, is checking the layer. What layer is that actually? Obstacle, but you could set that to whatever layer you want. So let's go ahead and jump into the code here. Um, at the top for the publicly declared variables, jump power, as I mentioned before, defaulting to a, a thousand, uh, because remember this is going to be applied to time dot delta time, so the actual value that's getting assigned on every frame is not going to be nearly so high. Uh, the max jump time, that's how uh, long you want the character to be able to hold the jump button down and for it to still do something. And uh, we changed speed to walk speed over here um, because we only want this to define its ability to move left and right. Maybe a character can jump really high, really fast, but is actually quite slow at walking. So giving the, uh, basically the de designer the ability to edit that. Uh, you'll also notice we set up a, a constant integer variable called obstacle layer. And this is just a representation of the uh, basically, the layer we want to target over here in project settings, tags and layers. So user layer 9, that corresponds with uh, basically layer 9 inside a code. Um, and where that gets applied uh, down here is uh, whenever you collide with basically an obstacle layer, and we would probably in the final code say collide with the obstacle, and specifically collide with on top of the obstacle, if you want to go a little bit deeper in the code. But the basic idea here is that when the game object collides with another game object that basically has a box collider or something like that, and that collidable object turns out to belong to the obstacle layer, you might call this the platform layer in your own game, uh, or something like that, then we're going to say jump started is equal to false and jump time elapsed is equal to false. And what those two variables are doing is resetting the jump. So basically, whenever a character lands on top of a platform, reset the jump to allow the character to jump again. Um, the reason you need that is so that you can't just magically reset the jump in the middle of the air uh, so that a character can jump as many times as it wants, but it actually needs to land on something first. Okay, uh, in addition, we have a couple properties over here. Uh, contact with platform top. Uh, as I was mentioning, if you wanted to make sure that it specifically landed on top of a platform, you would probably want to write the code for that. Um, I'm not going to do it right here, uh, just to save some time. But um, 
yeah, that, that's the idea you would be trying to target there. Uh, but what we did set up here is public Boolean jumping. Uh, so this is basically whether or not the character is jumping. So comment that out. Currently jumping. And how that's determined is A, has the jump started? Because if the jump hasn't started, then the character hasn't jumped. It might be falling, but it hasn't jumped yet. And uh, is the input button of jump down, by default in Unity, that would be your space bar. So for it to still be jumping, you have to be holding space down, or else it's just falling. And then has the jump time elapsed, exceeded the max jump time? Uh, basically, if uh, your character's been holding jump down for a long time, you want it to stop being able to keep climbing higher and higher and higher as if it's floating into the heavens. And how you would do that is basically limiting how long it can jump for. So if all three of those things are true, uh, then the character's still jumping, uh, which will matter down there in the fixed update method. The other one here, jump ready. Uh, basically, is the character able to currently jump? So in order for that to be possible, then the character cannot currently be jumping. The character must be in contact with a platform. So the opposite of that is if the character is not in contact with the platform, don't allow it to jump. And the character... Um, it, or, or wait, or uh, the character is already jumping, then it can be jumping still. Hold on a minute. Oh, okay, right, right, right. So if either of these three are uh, true, then return false. Probably would actually make a little bit sense to switch that around. So we'll do that here. So if the character is not jumping, or is in contact with platform top, basically, if it's sitting on top of a platform, or if jump started has not, uh, oh wait. This should be an and, actually. So, if the character's not jumping, right, 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 right. We need to change it to ands because we're switching from a return true, uh, return false to a return true. If the character is not jumping and the character is in contact with platform top, but the character has not started jumping, uh, then the character is ready to jump and you can start your jump. Okay. It's confusing myself a bit that there, but hopefully that makes sense for you guys. We'll also change the comment. If the character is not jumping, is in contact with the platform top, and hasn't started jumping, then it can start a jump. Okay, I think that's pretty clear there. So let's go down here a bit more and we can see where all of these properties actually matter. So in order to determine if the jump has started, uh, or, or if you're actually about to start a jump rather, so, since once you set jump started to true, that means the character has started jumping um, and that the jump hasn't concluded. The jump concludes when it lands on a platform. So if the jump if the jump is ready, which uh, all that stuff needs to be true, because this is actually included in jump ready, uh, we can actually eliminate that. It's redundant. So if the jump is ready and the input button gets pressed down for jump, then you start the jump by uh, setting the jump started to true. And if that's true, then jumping will be able to be true because jump started has to be true in order for jumping to be true um, logically and in the code. Uh, so if that's true, then this is unlocked to be possibly jumping. And that would mean uh, you can actually have a positive influence in the y direction. So if jumping is true, then the character is actually moving upwards. And uh, this variable is for the animations, if you remember from the last variable. So this would basically mean, oh, so it's animating slash moving in the up direction. So that would basically allow you to have the up facing animations playing for the sprites. Um, but beyond that, if the character is currently jumping, which remember, jump started has to be true, um, then you can start the timer or basically increment the timer for jump time elapsed uh, by doing plus equals time dot delta time, which is the time since the last frame. 
And then down here in the code, we did change it a little bit again. So originally it was uh, body dot move position and then a given vector, um, which was basically direction multiplied by speed multiplied by time delta time. That works worked fine for basically horizontal movements where we're not worried about um, drag or gravity or anything like that. But the second you need to care about drag or gravity in Unity, it becomes a lot better to actually use the add force method because then the rigid body can determine how this force is going to interact with the forces of the game world, the gravity, uh, the linear drag, and also the angular drag for rotations. So to get this, we do the x direction, that's left and right, by multiplying the walk speed, remember different variables for different types of movement, and then time delta time so that it's proportional to how much time since the last frame. And then for direction y, uh, we do jump power and time dot delta time. And now note that direction dot y will only be anything if the character is currently jumping, because up here, y jump is only going to be one if the character is currently jumping, which then gets fed into the direction. So the direction y will be zero unless the character is currently jumping. So um, you're applying a vector of zero unless the character is jumping effectively. So we just add that force to the rigid body 2D, and then that gives us the end result. Okay, uh, what did I do there? Let me see here. Uh, must be missing something really. Okay. Not all code returns a value. Ah, right, right. So we need a else return false. Because get always has to return a value, uh, at least for booleans. Um, so let's go ahead and hit play now. And it should work as it did before, just made the code make a little bit more sense. And that gives us the jumping. Um, now the reason we would want to implement the contact with platform top because, well, uh, if we get in contact with this platform theoretically on the side, that would still count as being in contact. Uh, I think so anyway. But yeah, this should be a good starter script for you guys. So hopefully that gives you a good starting place for how to do jumping inside of Unity for a 2D game. Uh, once again, if you want a more complete and a well-defined script, you can check out that uh, 2D platformer controller we were discussing in the last video, um, free in the assets, asset store. Um, I found it to be pretty awesome with the playtesting I've done with it. So that's probably what I'd recommend. Um, anyway, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this scripting video for Unity 2D and 5.6, and I'll see you guys in my next video.